All right, here's a relatively quick episode of Dave's Garage. So, ran into some issues yesterday with the ECU flash. Nothing with what Chris Moore did. These bikes, these new bikes, these Euro 5s, man, they're getting finicky. I've talked in conversations before from my other tuners that are like, you know, in the next three to five years, we're not going to be able to. These ECUs are going to be encrypted and locked, and there's going to be no way for us to do anything with them. And we're not going to be able to tune them without tripping some uh, e-fuse or something that then has to go to the dealer to be reset or the manufacturer or stuff like that. So I think the days of us tuning our bikes and unlocking them to their true potential are numbered. And we're starting to see some some things around that. In any case, Chris did his ECU flash. It's the second flash I've had him do on this bike. And he's, of course, tuned a bunch of my bikes. So nothing there as far as uh, the quality of the work concerned. Um, but when I put it back in, I should have just taken the bike up to him in a trailer and had him plug into the mandated Euro 5 port and flash the ECU that way instead of unplugging the ECU and taking it out. The problem is when you take it out, the ECU has to be powered up on a workbench. He's got a battery or a power supply there. He powers it up with a dongle and then plugs it in and he does this flash, right? Well, when it plugs in, this thing's used to being plugged into a CAN bus. CAN bus is a basic network and all your sensors and devices, they're all communicating back and forth on this CAN bus. So when you power up the ECU to flash it outside of the bike, it completely freaks out because it's like, where's all my guys? Where's all my stuff? None of my, none of my sensors are here. On the old bikes, it would throw those codes, and then you could do a reset of the ECU or clear it through the dash. Not anymore. It saves it to not just like memory with a computer where you pull the plug and it's gone. It's actually saved to basically a flash hard drive, just to, as, as an analogy. But there's a piece of storage in there that it holds that regardless of whether you reset it or, or anything. So you physically have to plug it in. It has all these codes. The bike won't start until then. And then you have to go in with a scanner tool and, and clear them. So from Chris, I got this adapter that goes to, from an ODB to this red plug, which is on all the new bikes. And he had like this cheap $30 basic automotive scanner, which works on all the other bikes. For some reason, it did not work on my bike. So then I go to the Stowe and I buy a much nicer Innova 5210, upgrade the firmware, and I'm using this $100 plus scanning tool. Both of them can read the codes, but can't get rid of them. It just errors. It doesn't say what the error is. It just said couldn't do it. So then I'm just like, what do I do? So I've got my ODB scanner tool, the Bluetooth version, this ODB Link LX, that I use for toning all my Triumphs. That's what I use with Tune ECU. And it's not specific to that bike. It's a, it's a generic one, but that's what I use for that. Um, and then I got a $5 torque app on my phone, and that read the codes and cleared them. And then I was able to cycle the ignition a few times, and it did fire up. Now, right now, I can't get into the dash settings, and I can't change the drive modes. I don't think that's going to be a problem. As soon as my pipe comes in, I'll be able to go ride it. I had this problem on the 2022 R1 when I put it on Opie's dyno. The front wheel wasn't moving, and I've seen tons of people say, yeah, I had it up on the rear stand, and I... I had the back tire spinning in the air in first gear as I was cleaning or spraying the chain, and now I'm locked out of my dash and I can't change my drive modes. This is apparently a problem. On the pre-17 models, you could go into the dash and clear the code. Now you have to do it with a scan tool, but apparently there's still something in here. I seem to remember with my R1, when I had it on the dyno with Opie, when, I, when we took it off, it was throwing an ABS or engine check light code. And so I was, I couldn't get it, you know, the dash works. I just couldn't get any of the settings. I couldn't change the clock, couldn't change the drive modes. I could scroll through the modes as far as moving it across, but I couldn't actually make any settings. And that's exactly what the R1 did, which I believe was a Euro 5 model. So I think what happens here is I have to wait till I get the pipe. I mean, I could put, I have the stock muffler on there or the cat just because I wanted to fire it up and not blow out my eardrums, but the map is really rich now because it's made for a full system. I don't want to risk fouling the plugs or doing anything by riding it around like that. So I'm going to have to wait to get the uh, Leo Vinci pipe later this week. And I think I just need to go out and ride it for like 20 minutes, get it up to highway speeds and the wheel speed sensors. It'll see that the front is matching the back and it kind of recalibrates some things. And I think that goes away. That's what I did. I, I rode home. I got like 10 miles from Opie shop, pulled over on the side of the highway, shut the motor off, turned it back on and the code went away. And then I could scroll through the dash. I think that's what's going on here. So I think we're almost out of the woods. I just, I got to wait till I get the damn pipe so I can go out and ride it safely. All right, my battery's topped off. We can go ahead and remove that. So what I wanted to cover here was that, and then I didn't make a video of removing the ECU, but I'm going to show you how you do it. 
Okay, we'll go ahead. We don't need this plug anymore, so let's get that out the way. Set that aside. Put this plug uh, back in. Cap that off. Tuck it down in there where it came from. Go back from whence you came. All right. Here's what you need to do. You take the seat off. One bolt, one bolt, screw, screw. This plastic piece pops off and there's gonna be another set of screws. Take those two screws out. To get these side panels off, because you've already removed all those screws, you're gonna have, right here is a Phillips, uh, sorry, to get this piece off, it's gonna be this. There's a push pin, pop that, and then pop those two push pins out. So one, two, three, screw, screw, and this side will pop right off, this is off, do the same on the other side, and that pops off. From there, two screws and two screws. Now what's nice about this locking mechanism for the seat is the locking mechanism that goes to the cable and the key is all mounted underneath here. This plate pops off and it has a piece with the grooves in it, and you'll see how it comes off. And so there's no cable here, that, to, you know, so you just pop that off. Then, once that's off, you can get to the end of this rubber band kind of fastener thingy here. And you'll be able to unhook it and pull this up, and this will then hang off the side. You're almost done. <laughs> At that point, you need to take out that screw, and there's a cylinder, a stainless steel spacer that comes out that goes from this side through that to this piece of plastic. So you need to take that out, take out that screw in the spacer. And then the last two screws are these Phillips screws right here. There's one here. And then there's one over on the other side. Once you take all that out and this is out of the way and this is out of the way and the panels are out of the way, you can pull this plastic in and lift up the front on both sides just enough. You can get up about three and a half, four inches to unplug these two. You push these pins and pop those out carefully. And then this one, you push this down here. You just heard a click. You hear a click. And then you rotate this out and you pop that off. And then you can slide this up. You pull this up with one hand. So the tray is up like where my hand is, and then you have this gap, and you can slide the ECU out. That's how you get the ECU out. And then you slide it back in, lay it down in there carefully without bending any pins, connect the, co the connectors, put in that one, that one, that one, settle it down in, push this down in, push in your steel spacers, your screws, put in those screws. That locks everything here. Next, you're going to put this on and put in those two uh, screws there the two screws there. That's all done. This, of course, you need to just lay back in there. That's your exhaust servo. And um, put the rubber band to hold it in place. I mean, I guess you could just remove it from this side as well. But either way, take it out and then put it back in. Um, it, it's, it's a kind of strap where it just hooks in, kind of like how your battery does. Similar concept. And then you put your side panels back on, and it's one screw, and the screw uh, underneath, and then that screw. And then you just put in your one, two, three... Uh, three push pins. That's it. It's not hard once you realize where everything goes. If you do take it out and um, send it off to get flashed instead of taking a bike somewhere, um, you're going to have a bunch of error codes you're going to need to fix. You're going to need a scanner. Now, other people are using those and they work. Neither of them worked for me. I was freaking the frig out because I'm like, I got a $16,000 paperweight. Won't start. The dash would come on, but couldn't do anything. It would turn over, but it wouldn't fire up. I had like, I don't know, 16 or something error codes in there. But um, I ended up using, getting, not using the two handhelds I bought for almost 150 bucks between the two of them. But this trusty little guy that I have had for years for programming Triumphs and uh, Aprilia's with Tune ECU. I plug that in, plug that in into the harness and use the uh, Torque Pro app. It's like $4.95 or something. Um, it does cars and motorcycles on, um, whatchamacallit, on, uh, on the uh, Google Play Store. I'm sure there's a version for, for iOS if you've got the, an iPhone. So that's where we're at. We're all done here. Everything seems fine now other than the dash issue, and I think that that's just like the R1. I have to just go ride it, but i got to wait for the new exhaust for that. And I certainly don't want to drive around with open race headers <laughs> or, you know, just open headers with no cats. That would be absolutely freaking obnoxious. Why are kids just constantly screaming? The kids are standing up there like three feet from each other and they're screaming at each other. And it's like, God, I hate kids. <laughs> it's just so goddamn annoying. Ugh.
It's like, can't you just talk? Why do you have to scream? If you're in the same room, imagine adults being three feet from each other at the dinner table. It's quiet. And you're just like, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How was your day? Screaming at the top of your lungs. You look at them like they were fucking retarded. But when kids do it, you're like, oh, isn't that adorable? No, it's not. All right. So we'll finish up... uh, the uh, grumpy old men, what grinds my gears episode of Dave's Garage here. <laughs> Other people's annoying kids. And uh, yeah, so I think we're just about done. I'm going to remove the, I, I had that cat put in just loosely hanging there just so it wasn't blowing out my eardrums when I did fire it up. I'm just going to take out that one bolt that's, you know, barely even in there. Remove that. And all I got to do now is wait for the Leo Vinci cat, uh, D-cat to come in. I'll do a video of putting that on. We've already got a video of removing all that crap. I need to put in my O2 sensors, screw the pipe, you know, clamp the pipe on the the headers. There'll be one mount over here somewhere. Uh, Probably that screw right there that'll mount up to it. And then put my muffler back on. And at that point, we're flashed, tuned, ready to go, and uh, we should be in really good shape. So hopefully that'll go and I'll do a ride review and hopefully that'll, having the wheels moving in harmony front and back, I don't think this is an issue as much with the flash as much as when you take it out, it it forces a recalibration that has to take place in order for everything to then get back to normal. My R1 did it, and I've seen uh, dozens of posts of people in different forums with R1s and MT10s. Oh, man, my dash doesn't work anymore. I can't get to my settings or change my ride mode. Well, what'd you do? Oh, I just had it up on the rear stand, and I had the rear wheel spinning in gear for a little bit while I was spraying cleaner on the or lube on the chain. They're like, yep, that'll do it. (laughs) It's a weird thing to make shit not work, but it's just the downside of advanced electronics is you got to deal with little gremlins like that. So anyway, folks, that's uh, today's update. Um, I was really hating life last night when I got home and my bike wouldn't run. Couldn't figure it out. So I'm like, oh, there's something wrong with the ECU. Now I got to throw the bike on a trailer, go get the trailer out of the backyard, which is a pain in the ass, borrow my wife's truck, take half a day off or a full day off work because it's 100 miles each way to his shop. Hope he has time for me to get in there and then hope that he can actually fix it. Otherwise, I got to take it to a dealer and try not to void my warranty by getting them to clear codes. On a whim, my buddy TJ was offering to come over with his Bluetooth adapter and, and he mentioned a Torque app. And I'm like, well, I do have a Bluetooth adapter. And I can get the Torque app. And so TJ, yeah, you were my inspiration. You uh, po- po- uh, pushed me in the right direction. And then I ended up clearing it out. And I just got to wait for the pipe so I can ride the goddamn thing and get the wheel speed sensors and everything to recalibrate. Uh, you got any thoughts, questions? If you've had a late model R1 or MT10 or any kind of bike from Yamaha that where you had the back wheel spinning in the dyno, but the front was stationary or on a rear stand or experienced that, let me know what happened and how you resolved it. Let me make sure that I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. We'll talk to you guys.